up everybody it's Thursday night again we're back and it is another Thursday here we're doing coffee and cigars as always thanks for tuning in really appreciate you being here so if things are gonna look a little bit different as you can see the the whole overall look as you can see we've got a banner here at the bottom that said that said welcome to the live stream 25 so this is the 25th episode of the live stream and you can see up here in the corner it says powered by StreamYard so I don't know if you might have seen, but in this past week I did get the new Mac that I've been talking about, the M1. So I'm be able to. I'm moving away from this laptop that I have here. Yeah, let me show you. I can finally get away from this thing and use this for other purposes. And as you can see, it's a little bit more delayed, right? It's not the same. Look, I'm not. Even, I'm picking it up now. I'm picking it up. Look, I'm picking it up. <laughs> it's like I'm going back in time. It's like so. Um, so I got the new Mac, and now I can do, I think it'll do a lot more because the processing speed will happen. And so this is going to be a little bit of a mishmash where we're going to do, just test some things out to see what works and what doesn't. So right now I'm looking to see if, uh, I'm looking to see on the studio control room if there is, uh, if I can actually pull it up, I guess not. I guess it's coming all through the, it's all coming through StreamYard. So let's see. If you have comments, drop them in the comments. And StreamYard is this this service that allows you to stream, and it gives you multiple different functions. So I can finally do more interesting things that makes the whole thing, well, hopefully will make it very dynamic, right? So we can, uh, you know, for example, like, so for tonight's coffee is going to be called the Annabelle Lee. So as you can see, we got that here. And the coffee is um, this one. This is our annual release. We release this coffee every year for Valentine's Day. And it's just one that, that um, well, we'll get into that in a moment. So. The idea behind the stream yard is that it just allows you to do multiple things. So we, what we can do is we can all eventually, I'm thinking maybe we'll stream this not just to YouTube, but also to Facebook at the same time, which this will allow us to do. Plus it allows us to be a little more dynamic and have, you know, interactive comments, um, bring in guests. Uh, what else can it do? It can do screen sharing. So we're going to do some testing of those things as we go along tonight. and. Uh, do our thing. So drop your name in the comments. Let me know who's who's out there watching. I see there's a few of you, so drop your name in there and uh, say hello. Blah 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 blah. And uh, so well, let's go back to it. So the first coffee we're gonna have is the, the tonight's coffee is the Annabelle Lee. Like I said, this is the coffee we release every February for Valentine's Day, and we're gonna release it this coming week. And so basically, it's it is an homage to you know. Edgar Allan Poe, who died here in Baltimore um, for a, quite a number of years ago, like over 120 years. And so, like I said, there are, we can do comments. And so, like Rusty's saying, 25 shows, yeah, this is the 25th show. So, technically, it's really 26 weeks, but we missed a week somewhere along the way. Um, so, yeah, good to see you, Rusty. Thanks for coming down. And then uh, there's Tony. Nice effects. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. When you so this is the free version of StreamYard, and so when you do the paid versions, you can actually do the multi multi platform streaming, and then you can also uh, do the uh, you can actually change the graphics to more custom. So instead of it just being really this simple um, this simple kind of graphic like you're seeing down here or down here, right? Hey George, good to see you. Thanks for coming in, um, and Tony as well. Uh, this will—you can actually manipulate those and do more fanciful things. All right, so let's see here. What do we got going on? So, like I was saying, the we have our coffee, the Annabelle Lee, and the Annabelle Lee is about is about. Oh, where's my notes? I got notes somewhere here. Right, right. Everything's new, so everything's. I'm trying to get together with everything. I'm trying to get everything in, in uh, <clears throat> everything smooth, right? So Annabelle Lee is named after Edgar Allan Poe's last complete poem that, about the death of a beautiful woman. Um, a love so strong that angels 
became envious, right? So now, since this is about poems and poetry and Edgar Allan Poe, and this is Baltimore, we will do some poetry. And no, we're not the Pipe Club. We're not going to do this all the time. It's just for this. The first stanza. <clears throat> Let me move this over here. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Oh, that's nice, huh? First stanza, maybe we'll ask, I'm, I think we're going to feature this coffee for the next few weeks until we get to Valentine's Day, and we're going to do stanzas every episode just because. <laughs> All right, so let's, moving on, we're going to brew the coffee, right? And... Oh, that's right. I should have. I, should, I, meant, I meant to show you that here's the stanza. It was many, many a year ago in the kingdom by the sea that a maiden lived there, whom you may know, by the name of Annabelle Lee. A maiden she lived no thought that another to love and be loved by me. Right. And so these are things that it will allow us to do. I can also pull that banner off of there, so we don't have to to look at that anymore. And then Rusty saying, quote the raven, nevermore. Maybe we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Nevermore. Um, okay, so coffee. Where are we going? So today we're going to brew with the French press. We haven't done the French press in quite a long time, have we? So the French press is here. And French press is relatively simple. You know, you just get... Oh, this is a... Seven, this is a... 17 ounce French press from Bodum. Of all the French presses, I do think Bodum makes the best. They, they're just really durable and, they, and then they're interchangeable. So if you have, you can buy the different Bodum styles and then, like this is what's called the Chambord, this particular style. And the glass is interchangeable between them all. And there's four different sizes. There's a 12 ounce, a 17 ounce, a 31 ounce, and then a 51 ounce, or 37 ounce and a 51 ounce. So you take that, take the coffee. So again, we're making a 12 ounce cup, so we're going to use, oh, that's what I forgot. I forgot to get a cup. We're gonna use 24 grams of the coffee, ground, ground coarsely, of course. Right. I need my my thermal mug here. We're gonna use thermal mug today. This is what was nearby. My nephew gave this to me last year. Huh, nice. All right. So So from here, once you have the crown coffee in, you're just going to pour the water. And what we're going to do first is saturate the grounds. You could do all kinds of methods to do it. I just wet the grounds and we want to let the coffee bloom. And of course the blooming is the CO2 gas from freshly roasted coffee that lifts the top of the coffee up. And you just need to push it back down so that it can steep with the water and get the full extraction, right? Okay, so. We're gonna wait, oh, we need to turn the timer on. So timer on, running. So we're gonna wait about 30 seconds for, yeah, this, this to go. So how's your guys' week been? What have you guys been up to? Anything happen interesting? Um, oh, I guess, I guess the whole, Capital thing happened the day before we did the last one, right? Yeah, because it was last Wednesday, man. Right? Everybody's getting rested. I had to try to scrub my parlor account because, you know, that person totally, like, oh, now we're, have, we're past 30 seconds, 41 seconds. We're going to break down. I just break it down. Some people like to stir. I don't stir because, you know what, I just don't want to... Uh, if I can get away with not having another utensil to clean, I'd rather get away with that. So since we're doing something a little bit new, 
how does it look? You know, how does the image, how does the sound? Uh, this is really kind of my, I did a chest with it yesterday, but you know, it's kind of hard to say, to say unless you're actually in the middle of it. Plus also, one of the things, how's the image quality? Because with the free version of StreamYard, they only allow you to stream at 720p instead of the normal 1080 that we normally do through the YouTube studio. Um, so if there's any concerns about the, the picture quality, let me know. Because what I see, well, actually, I guess it's a little bit. Yeah, I guess I'm watching it. Okay. And so Rusty's saying, video crisp, more video, more crisp, and so far. Oh, so it's more crisp now, the today than it normally is. Okay, good, good. I think a lot of that had to do with the uh, the processing power of the the laptop which is now almost seven and a half years old. All right, so we're gonna wait four minutes for this to happen. What else is there to talk about? I don't know. What else are we doing here? Oh, we're gonna be doing some, uh, oh, I figured the mailbag's been quite busy this, this week, so we're gonna do some unboxing as well. That should be quite interesting. There's quite a few boxes to go through. Oh, and I see Brian is now over at Bud's house. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's it going? Who's over there? Just you, Bud, and who else is joining you guys? And what are you guys smoking? Let me know what you're smoking. That's all. I always want to know what you guys are smoking, what you're drinking. You guys know what I'm drinking. All right, it's almost time. It's still another minute, man. That's the one thing about this is it, it does take four minutes. And since you're not really doing it, it's, it's just steeping, you don't really do anything, so you just kind of wait. So in, in situations like this, you're just kind of, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, people ask me, like, what do you like to brew at home? And in, ma in many respects, I like to use this at home because typically if I'm having coffee, I'm, I'm also making breakfast at home, right? So if I'm making breakfast, this allows me to, to c finish cooking and, c and plate all of the food while not having to worry about it. So if you're doing a pour over, you got to attend to it. A lot of brewing devices, you have to attend to them. This one, once you put the, the, the liquid in, the water, it just takes four minutes. So you, you can time your plating. Because I'm really kind of like weird, a stickler like that. Like if I'm making breakfast and I'm making coffee, I want it all to come to the table at the same time and all hot. Now, so Brian's saying that the video is freezing at Bud's. Oh, freezing at Bud's. I'm not sure what that's all about. I, I'm seeing it on my end here on the last. So what I'm doing is I'm streaming it out to you. Oh, here we go, four minutes. I'm streaming it out to you guys from the M1, and then I am... I'm actually taking it over wireless from our router onto the laptop, so... I'm kind of seeing, we're, we're a few, at least on my, on my version, we're a little bit behind. Like, we're not totally in sync. All right, so there's the coffee. Mm. Oh, and Tony's also at, at uh, Bud's and uh, drinking and smoking the My Father Judge Corona Gorda. And Brian says it might be a Bud, it might be, it might be, it might be. All right, let's have a, have a nose. Mm, there's a nice chocolateness to it, smooth, a bit of creaminess to it. Oh, the banner will go back. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I did this is this is from actually a test roast that I did the other day and now we can uh, finalize that roast for this week okay so today's cigar is going to be uh -oh. so many screens you lose your notes <laughs> So 
and he says it's Buddy's projector. It's that old stuff, man. And Scott is smoking Ave Maria. And it's also, oh, there's a lot of guys that, man, did you guys learn your lesson after that, after our last scare? We had a scare of uh, COVID two, three weeks ago. Oh, so again, our cigars come from Tobacco Leaf in Jessup. So this is the, this is the Illusione HL Candela. Let me take it out of the wrapper. This is the HL um, the HL Candela. And so HL means uh, Holy Lens, and it's a Lancero, and it's a 7.5 by what? By 42. So it's a little bit bigger than, let's say, like their, um, like they also make one that's called the, uh, what is it called? Oh, the El Aguito. And I think the El Aguito is actually like a, 40, a 38. And this is a 42, and so this was one of the, I, I believe this is one of their first, the Illusion, one of the Illusionist's first Candelas that came out, like, I think in 2010. So it's actually, this one's a, this is a, it started out as a limited edition release, and then um, several years ago it became a, a regular production cigar, but the production is going to be a little bit slower because Candela wrapper takes, the Candela production just isn't as, as much. So Brian's uh, smoking a La Grande Plus, A.J. Fernandez, or, oh, La Grande, La Grande, La Grande Yave. Yave. The Grand Key. The Big Key. Oh, the Big Key. The Big Key. And Bud's saying, the video didn't freeze. I hit the space bar. Oh, speaking of which, Bud, um, there was this, uh, this thing your wife told me not to tell, not to share with you, which I'm going to now share with you from Facebook. There is some kind of monkey monkey tail beard where it kind of like they cut it so that it cuts across the face down here comes up like a mustache and then they taper they they, they round it off so it looks like a monkey's tail I think that's the new uh, that's the new thing coming up and then Dave is smoking the Avo Classic Churchill excellent excellent right on right on that sounds good and Bud smoking the smoking the Ave Maria Morningstar Bud is a big proponent of Ave Maria, so if you happen to be watching from uh, Cigars International, you should send him uh, an ambassador kit. All right, so let's have a smell here. The we're getting more, more barnyard, light manure. What else is there? Maybe some grassiness, you know. One thing that I've always liked about Candela's historically is that they are a little bit of saltiness on the palate. I'm not sure if this is going to be that way, but traditionally that's what I've liked. And then when I read from different reviewers, the HL, where, where Candela's are normally milder smokes, the HL is supposed to be a more robust, full-flavored um, full body, more medium to full bodied cigar. So we're going to find out. But th the color is really nice. Look at that. That green is really, really lovely. Lovely, lovely. Actually, I think it looks better on screen than it does in person. Because the color just here looks, the color in my monitor looks really nice. And the, it's really smooth. Right? Silky. Yeah, that's actually really nice. Feels good. And then it's time for the cut. There we go, good. I'm gonna cut it with the MTX cutter. Look at that. Oh, there's a little bit of rust happening. That's what happens after, you know, six, seven years of ownership and cutting. We're gonna cut it. Oh, nice. Nice and straight. Look at that. Professional. That's the kind of neat thing that you can see here that I always thought about the Candelas is that it, uh, I just love how it looks with the green and then the brown. I just think that juxtaposition is really just kind of visually very appealing. On the, on the, t on the foot, it doesn't really show up as well if you look straight on. It's doing it, but I think here it looks, it's really just kind of, attra I think it's just attractive. Come on. Yeah. All right, so let's give it a cold draw. 
Brian's asking, do candelas make me thirsty? Um, I, I don't recall, you know, I don't get to smoke too many candelas. I mean, the other candela that I've smoked a bit more is that one from Roma Craft. But I don't, I don't recall it making me more thirsty than other smokes. And then Rusty's asking, does a candela age well or should it be smoked sooner than later? That I don't know. That I don't know for sure because pretty much all the candelas I've got, uh, even when I bought a few, and by few maybe like five at a time, I smoked them relatively quickly. You know, no, no, I haven't really done any aging experience. Maybe some of the other guys like Tony and, or George might have had some experience with that. Okay, so it's light. Well, the cold draw. Yeah, a little bit of grassy, some light saltiness. There is a sweetness. There's a really lovely, nice sweetness that I think is really enjoyable. All right, so let's light it up. We're going. We're staying with matches. I've got tons of matches that we need to burn through. All right, here we go. The draw is snug. So far the draw is snug on the light up. But, you know, sometimes it's tight and then it loosens. So, there's the light. It's always interesting to see how when you look at when you look at the tip of the of the cigar, you can see how it has a little bit of brownishness as it burns. You know, from my understanding with candela wrappers, they actually take the candela, they actually take the leaves, hang them in the curing barns, and then bring the temperature up to 165 degrees, which rapidly dries the uh, the tobacco. But it also, because they're dealing with such higher temperatures, it's a lot more dangerous, I guess. You know, it's more, it's more prone to ignition and then burning down the entire barn. So, because of that, like, Dion Giolito, the owner of Illusione, you know, kind of said it's really kind of, because of that temperature problem, it's really kind of a pain in the ass for them to make these. Um... So the initial light, I think, yeah, definitely there's some grassiness, some earthiness. It's their sweetness, maybe slight saltiness. There was a bit of pepperiness on the, uh, just on the initial puff, initial few puffs. But that pepper, while it was there initially, it's kind of gone out. But saying that it was, we. Oh, they were at 200, 240p, and they bumped up to 720p. Now it looks better. Good, 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 good. I should be big on, I'm big on the screen. That's good, that's good. Well, then he says he thought I didn't have enough light, but then I saw that it's resolution that was lower. Ah, yes. Good, good, I'm glad you got it. I'm glad we're getting a nice picture now. So let's see here now. Like I said, there's other things we can do. So it says here that I can share a screen. So let's try the screen share. See what happens. Oh, there, share screen. Bringing up all kinds of 
Okay, I'm going to share this. You two, you working? Chrome has lost permission to capture the screen. Okay. I had to do some clearing. Let's try this again. Should I say, see if this will work? Oh, it's working right on. All right, so now we can. I have no idea what's going on now. <laughs> let's see what we got here. All right, look at that. Oh, All right, let's see. How does that work? Does that work? I saw this a little bit earlier today. I just thought it was kind of neat. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> All right, all right, all right, that's good, that's good. Okay, that's good, that's good. You know, and so this will allow us to find, like, uh, videos from whatever maybe from some other reviewers, and make fun of them. All right, that worked. Oh, cool. Okay, good, good. Okay, we're going to remove... Okay, we're back now. All right, so it's starting off the first third. So far, pretty good. You know, there was so much talk in the different reviews that I saw that talked about medium to full flavor. I don't think I really get that. It, it seems pretty... The initial part here seems pretty mild to me, to my palate. It's not, it's not that punchiness that I was, I was thinking we might be getting. So let's have a look at some of the other reviewers. So... Oh yeah, we can do that. Oh, we'll do that. That'll be a trust. That might be. That might be nice. All right, let's go back and do this. Where are you? Okay, so we're gonna share again. Oh, I can go back to that. Oops. I go to Okay, so now you can see this is actually the let's go back here. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh illusion. So like back in May of twenty eleven, in Half Wheel had this, this is Charlie Monado's and he gave the uh, gave it a 84. I guess he's not a fan of Lanceros, but he thought it had a lot going on for him. Ooh, all right, that's good enough. So, 84 from from Charlie at Half Wheel, and then uh, Cigar Guide in June of 2017 gave it a 91. You're totally right, bud. My laptop would not do any of this. <laughs> I was lucky to get the laptop to work at all, my gosh, for this kind of thing. You know, reading through these guys' notes, like, first third from Half Wheels talks about sweet grassy, grassy earth, oak, black pepper, woodsy, toasty, medium full to full flavor, full body, tight draw, above average smoke. You know, I don't really, maybe there's some of that toastiness, sure. Some black pepper, but it's not really like, or maybe it's, actually, maybe it's starting to build now. Hmm. 
Okay, well, wait, well, wait. Before I say anything, I'll wait a little bit. It's starting to develop a little bit more strength on the palate. Oh, and we got a taste with the coffee. And Tony says, it's not going to be as hearty as the Roma Craft Candela, that's for sure, that's for sure. Nothing's really that robust as the Roma stuff. Actually, I was at uh, Raul's yesterday at Tobacco Leaf. And um, they had, speaking of the, the robust, they actually had a box of the Revenges. And I almost bought it, but I was like, oh, I should, I should save money for the moment. I don't want to spend money. So I did withhold from going crazy with that. So a little bit about this, it's called the HL, right? as you can see here, it's called the HL because um, it's a Lancero, but it's meant to be called the Holy Lance, and the Holy Lance is, uh, what was it, so Constantine, so the, the, the whole rumor behind all of the Holy Lance is that the Holy Lance is the spear that pierced Jesus while he was on the cross, you know, they gave him the wound, and so he was bleeding, that they took the... Uh, into the into the towels so evidently this holy lance this this magical spear spear and magic helmet uh, traveled through time and the first Catholic Roman Emperor Constantine it, he is said to have wielded this spear as he marched across the land and defeated his enemies I, th I guess it's kind of like the idea that the Nazis were going to do with the Ark of the Covenant in Raiders of the Lost Ark, that kind of thing. But evidently Constantine did it to build the Roman Empire. George says, I never read a review of a cigar that I'm currently smoking. <laughs> I hear you. But sometimes I like to, what I what I do is I like to have a look at the reviews because really I'm looking at their scoring. You know, I've commented about the scoring multiple times and how they're so so much disparity. Like, this one's 184, one's 91. That's a pretty large discrepancy. Also, I mean, I get it because, you know, they're six years apart in uh, reviews. And they're actually different cigars, com probably different cigars completely from different, I mean, different lots. Um, yeah. Rusty, I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> You know, Rusty, the interesting thing is that it really was through Bugs Bunny that I was introduced to opera. You know, all of the, the Spear Magic Helmet with, the, with Wagner and, um, what is it, uh, the Barber of Seville, Puccini. So I started, I really enjoyed those when I was a child. And then it really wasn't, it didn't really, like, click that it was opera for me personally, probably until I saw Amadeus. So it's burning nicely, right? It's got good, good smoke. It's got, it's a nice burn. It's even. It's a slight buckling there, but you know, it's good. It's a good cigar. It's a very good. Ah, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not the only one that that had had that exposure. I mean, it's an, I'm going to say that I want to. I'm saying that I don't. I don't find it to be seriously co very complex. I'm having a difficult time talking today for some reason. I don't find it to be terribly complex. I do, but I'm enjoying it. I think it's a very enjoyable cigar. I think I like that kind of salty, kind of woodsy sweetness from the Candela wrapper. I mean, I, I, I traditionally like Candelas, and I've sought them out in the past. You know whether it was the older Fuentes from years ago or, you know, the new now, the Romas. But usually if I find a, um, 
If I find a candela somewhere, I'm probably going to at least try it. Ah, so Amy has another gig in Baltimore coming uh, February 13th. Oh, private concert. So, is the private concert brought? Is it? It's private for those who are in attendance, or private for the broadcast. So, for all the all of you guys, um, Rusty's wife Amy is a world class opera singer who sang at the Metropolitan Opera, and just amazing vocal talent. Um, I mean, really, at at the peak of of a uh, of the craft. And so she comes to Baltimore every once in a while to do shows with Baltimore with uh, Maryland Opera. So if this is available online, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, also, there's a, if you guys are interested, there's a good video. Uh, I'll show you. I'm going to pull it over here. I'll just share it. I won't put it on the, uh, I'll wonder if it'll come up in the search. Oh, yeah. So if you, here, I'm going to drop it right here. Okay, so it's a closed performance but with no audience. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Is that also with, with Maryland Opera or is that something else? That's interesting. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, make sure that you send the information out, make sure to disseminate to everyone. And like I said, the... Um, the this video here if you if you click on it it's a video that i made about when amy was here back in the summer we it's one of our our spro coffee uh vlog videos but you get an idea for the for her, her singing talent because i'm actually using one of her her performances as the the audio track in it ah good yes with my mom. oh that's good the maestro is the maestro is always a good guy Now that makes sense. It's going to be kind of cold, so no more outdoor performances. So the coffee, because it's a little bit on the creamier side, this particular blend and roast, it actually goes really nicely <coughs> with this cigar. To be honest with you, it's not really the result that I was trying to go for. With the blend and roast, I really was trying to get more of a chocolatey and fruit. Um, so it, I'm gonna, I might try to re make some changes to the blend as well as maybe the roast profile. For next week, then. For next week. So Bud's asking, have you figured out to have a virtual guest on your show? Yes. Well, not yes. It's a yes and no answer. So, like, this thing, um, let's see. So this is my control center, right? As you can see here in the lower corner, you can see here where you can, uh, this is the camera, and then this is the screen share. Now, here allows me to... Do so. Oh, here I can invite. Ah, okay. Let's try this. All right, so try to click on that, and we'll see any of you or whoever. And um, I don't know what's going to happen if you. If you do click on that, I guess we'll find out. So, and then I can make this like a, oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. Hmm. There you go. Okay. So if you, one of you will click that, try with your phone or something.
if you're brave. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's, I guess it's supposed to, I guess it will come to me. Oh, there we go. Rusty, there we are. I see Rusty, we're going to add Rusty to the stream. What's oh, up? Weird. Weird. <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> good to see you, good to see you. So, no, I don't know if I'm hearing an echo. Oh, there's a little bit of an echo because there's a delay. Let me. Uh, oh, I figured oh, I out what it is. I still had it in, 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 in YouTube. Oh yes, okay, there you go. But I still, still, I still hear a little echo right now. So, are you coming through just your like laptop? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. okay. I was talking to this. Um, this guy that I watch a stream from, this guy named Alan, he does something called Sound Speeds. He did this massive, like, live stream um, at the beginning of the year, and it was like, or the end of the year, and uh, I think he was telling me that he did StreamYard, which is this application, plus Zoom, and he had like, you know, at one point he must have had like nine or ten people on there. Oh, the guys from Faders North are calling in. Let us add them to the stream. What's up, gentlemen? Oh, look at these guys. What's happening? Live stream. I thought Brian was there, too. No? Oh, there you go. Right on, right on. Oh, all right, all right. So that that's kind of how it works. That we can do like different shuffling with the. Oh, okay, good splits. Oh, nice. So as you can see, there's a variety of things that we can do. All right, good. Oh, that that's quite nice. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off so that we can be a little bit less. Remove that. There we go. All right, good. All right, so thanks for calling me, and I appreciate that. Now we can un have better understand. Now have better understanding of how this works, so we can. And actually, I met this guy, um, Tony. You might have met him. The um, who's the the rep for Michael? The rep for um, he's a broker for uh, uh, Agonorsa. I met him yesterday while I was at Tobacco Leaf, and he was like, "Hey, maybe we should." Uh, I said, I told him about the, this live stream, and he said that you know, if ever I want to do something with them, we can definitely do that together. Um, so that would be that would be. How are we gonna let me close all this? Good, okay. That would be how to proceed. So he was actually talking about. He, he was sharing with me, like, so when we were at, I forgot what they called it, but we were at, um, what do you call it? We were at the, we were at, uh, we were at the Tobacco Leaf, and, no, I'm sorry, when we were back in 2014, when we were down at the Agonorsa factory in, um, in Esteli, uh, Paul Palmer was, and, um, and our, and, Arsenio Ramos were letting us try the different tobaccos. So they take the different leaves and they roll them together. Well, they just roll the individual tobaccos into little tiny, like, smoke, so you could just taste the leaf. And I was thinking maybe we could do some kind of unified tasting where, in the future, where we would do, I don't know, get get him to come on the show and then talk about, talk give his spiel and talk about the... Uh, the cigar and the different components, and then even get to try the different components, um, like as a gift pack kind of thing. But now that we've taken a step towards getting that technology in order, well, all right, all right. So Bud says, it wanted you to use headphones, I believe, to prevent the echo. Oh, that's probably true. A lot of people that I've seen doing this thing, this kind of uh, 
live stream, I do tend to wear headphones. And then Brian says, it sounds like fun. Yeah, I think that'd be a good one. I think we're a good one. And I like the last week's idea for doing uh, a March Madness kind of round robin kind of uh, blind tasting. I've, I've got to talk to Raul about that. We did, when I was there yesterday, I was kind of in a rush, so I didn't get a chance to hang out with him and chat. And he had a bunch of people that were in trying to, you know, get his attention. So let's figure out. We'll catch up later. So the cigar's moving on. Right now we're kind of moving past the first third. That's one of the interesting thing, like, you know, when you get to these seven, over seven inch cigars, like, the thirds are really long. Like, it's a long way to go for the thirds. It's consistent. It's not, it still has the same kind of salty, woodsy, light pepper. grassy I mean it hasn't changed it's good it's good oh I know what I didn't go through so this cigar and you know I, I always thought I didn't realize that Illusione made their cigars with more than just Aganorsa so when we were at the factory in 2014 you know Dion happened to be in town as well so we were all hanging out together. But turns out that this particular cigar is not made by Agnor, so it's made by the Fabrica de, Deba Fabrica de Tabacos Raices Cubanas in um, Dunley, Honduras. And that's owned by Rome and Demonio, who blended this cigar. So it's using a Nicaraguan Claro wrapper for this. And then, of course, it's a basically a Nicaraguan Puro. So Nicaraguan for the filler, binder, and wrapper. Um, unspecified other than just Nicaragua. So the MSRP is, uh, well actually this is a pretty old MSRP, it was at the time was $9.35 a stick and this one I bought for $11.95. Um, so you know a little bit on the a little bit on the pricey side, you know for like I said before when it gets to be 13 and up, 12, 13, that's where I kind of uh, Brian says, I have an HLs from the 2010, but not Candela. Ooh. To break them out for the group. Excellent. Excellent. We'd love to see that. We'll have to bring you on here to have to talk about it. And talk about your extensive collection. As well as your strategies for collecting. That might be interesting. Maybe that'll be interesting to talk about with different collect different cigar smokers and their strategies for collecting cigars or, or you know you know inventorying their cigars. <laughs> but it's that shortest live stream ever. <laughs> all right, all right. Not bad. This is actually, it's getting, actually, it's getting a little bit nicer, a little more, a little more pop, a little more interesting, a little more complexity. Maybe getting a little of this nutmeg, the spicy, the spiciness is starting to develop. So, Compared to the other cigars we smoked over the last few weeks, this draw is tighter, and there's so you, it requires a little more suction in order to draw on it. But it's a really it's a good it's a good amount of draw. I mean it's a good it's a good resistance. So it's a little bit tighter than others, but it's also quite. Um, Quite, quite all right. And I think Brian likes that as well. 
It'll be like a three months ago. <laughs> you know, I mentioned that guy, Alan, who does that sound stream podcast, Sound Speeds. He's called Sound Speeds on YouTube. And man, his, he's, I've been watching him for the last like six months. And he's kind of a funny guy. He's all about, you know, motion picture sound, you know. And, but the interesting thing about him is when he does his live streams, he's like, epic with I mean he goes for like three four hours at a time it's really quite like it's really quite interesting and the idea that it'll be a three night cigar that that kind of three cigar night that would sounds like a that's kind of like would be an Allen type of show Yeah, the smoke is good. The smoke has a nice aroma. This is actually quite a nice, enjoyable cigar the whole way around. So George, what are you smoking tonight and drinking? I know you're gonna drink be drinking something. I hope you recovered from your uh, Neanderthal experience the other weekend. Any other banners? We oh yeah, look at that. We got the oh we've got our that's what we're supposed to be doing. Time to. Uh, do the mailbag thing. That's right, that's right. So, like I said, we've got the, uh, we do the mailbag unboxing. Got a bunch of stuff that came in this week. So first up is this package from one of, uh, one of our tertiary suppliers. This is from a company called Genuine Origin. And so every once in a while, Genuine Origin George, Genuine Origin is a coffee importer, so one of the ways to get coffee as a wholesale roaster is to, is you work with importers that have their people that go to different places around the world and they find coffee and they bring it into their warehouses and then you can uh, buy it from them if you want. And so to, to facilitate that, they'll send you samples of coffee in order to let you figure out what you want to buy. Oh, George says, no smoking tonight, but vodka martini on the deck, nice. Oh, is it? It's pretty nice out. When I was out earlier, before we, I came to here, it, it seemed like it was pretty mild. I mean, this morning when I got up to go to work, it was pretty darn cold. But today it's a little bit, this afternoon it seemed mild. I guess it's a little bit mild now. So we're looking at the samples from Genuine Origin. So first one up is this Peru Chusky SHB Wash MCMG1. So SHB is strictly hard beans, so it should be a high altitude grown coffee. Uh, what does it say here? It doesn't say anything about the altitude, but basically, you know, they'll send you these samples. These are about 300 grams, which is enough of a sample for you to review the quality of the beans, do moisture content readings. Um, and then do some roasting and tasting with the coffee. So this one is from Peru, Chusky. Oh, these are both Peru. So there's a Peru Chusky and then a Santo Domingo decaf. So this is, a, as you can see, here's an SW. Oops, SW is here. SW means Swiss water, and Swiss water is kind of the one, one of the more popular ways of decaffeinating coffee. Um, the, one of the older methods is what's called methyl, methylene chloride and uh, Swiss Water is a new one, and they're actually, oddly enough, they're based out of Vancouver, Canada, instead of Switzerland. And then there is Mountain Water Decaf, which is made in Mexico. And the Mountain Water and the Swiss Water are somewhat similar, and basically the, the general theory is that they take the coffee, they soak it in hot water, which strips out the caffeine as well as the flavor, then they use a process to strip the flavoring away from the caffeine in the water 
and then they transfer the, the water, the flavored water without the caffeine back to the tanks and then dry them so that basically the beans reabsorb the flavor during the drying process. Which, which is why you see this right here, right? It, it's pretty dark green instead of this, which is a, a nicer green, right? Um, basically, the cellular structure of these coffees, decaf coffees, have just basically been beat to hell, right? Because of the invasive nature of the of the process. Brian's also asking for George, is it a dirty martini? So those are two to try, and then the other one that I, I the other way to do it is methylene chloride. And methylene chloride is basically you take methylene chloride, you put the coffee in the methylene chloride, it soaks out the um, the caffeine, and then you dry it back out, and then it's all done. Now, traditionally, I personally have gravitated towards methylene chloride chemical types of uh, decaffeination because it leaves the coffee sweeter, a little bit better flavor, where the, the Swiss water tends to dampen the flavor a bit. That, that's my experience with it. Um, that also could be in a big part because in order to do decaffeination at a at a profitable economical level, you have to do something like you have to do a container load, which is a container holds of forty thousand pounds of coffee. And oh, George says absolutely, the dirtier the better. <laughs> Brian says, like it sounds like a terrible. I mean, it is. I mean, if you, as you can see, the process is free. Like it damages. I mean, it's really damaged. And when you roast the coffee and when you brew the coffee it's really quite different um, but like I was saying I find the methylene chloride to be more in flavorful sweeter but like I was saying the, part of that could be that in order to do it at an economic at a uh, gosh at an economic scale you really need to do it by the container so you have to do 40,000 pounds at a time and since most people, even in the industry, have this kind of negative attitude towards decaf, they're not really going to send the highest quality coffees for decaffeination. Partially because, you know, now you're adding decaffeination, so you have an additional cost, and so you have to mark the coffee up more. And buyers in the United States are, the higher the price goes, the more reticent they are to buy. So you try to keep the, the price low by using lower graded coffees. One of the benefits of that is that because it's stripping out the caffeine, caffeine as a substance has a very bitter flavor to it. So you're actually removing some of the bitterness of the coffee by decaffeinating it, making the coffee sweeter. So a lot of places will you know, go with a little bit lower quality coffee for the decaffeination, save on money there because it's going to be offset by the cost of the decaffeination and then they get a product that's somewhat similar. But I have had coffees that were done by some of our own producers that we work with that they took the chance, decaffeinated a whole bunch of their like really nice quality coffees through Swiss water and that was an excellent result. So Brian's asking, so do you think the Kendall's making thirsty now that you're smoking well? It's interesting you ask that at this very moment because right now, unlike most episodes, I am feeling a bit on the parched side. I'm typically not, I typically don't drink water during the show. I don't, I don't know why I don't do that, but, but definitely I think maybe there is more of a, of a drying of the palate, like... Like, you know, I normally, like those of you who know me really well and smoke together, and I usually use, uh, I get a lot of spit that comes out from the smoking. This is, there, there seems to be less. Hmm. Now that I've been talking, the cigar's kind of gone out. So we're going to have to do a relight. So we're going to try the Cirillo method of just going around the edge 
the edge of the uh, the band, uh, the edge of the scar there. It's coming alive. I'm not having enough. I'm not having enough length on the matches. There we go. So, Brian, do you normally get this that kind of like uh, thirstiness, additional thirstiness from Kendall wrappers? So that really goes well. I mean, a little bit of bitterness. I have to say, ever since Cyril was on the show and showed us that technique about lighting along the edge for relighting, that's actually turned out a lot better than like normally I would, you know, kind of like knock off the extra ash and then light it from the inside, or maybe knock out the whole like um, the whole ash bed so that you would kind of like a little tunnel. And then there'd be a little bit of acridity, but this is, it's always smoother. All right, so let's move on to the next. So that that's the, uh, that's that. There's actually a new, a, a newer style of, um, of decaffeination that we're actually using at the moment. It's called sugarcane process and it's basically um, what is it? They take the sugarcane and they press it and they take the sugarcane juice and then what they do is they um, <coughs> they basically turn it into alcohol <coughs> into ethylene into ethylene and then they use the ethylene as a as a chemical component to to remove the caffeine and it's all natural, but basically it, it's kind of like methylene chloride, but you're deriving the, the, the ethers, you know, from a natural process, so it, it seems more natural. The flavor is actually quite nice. So right now we've got a, I'm using a Colombian decaf that has the sugarcane process. So next up, oh, let's see, Brian says, I feel parched after smoking rum crap. Ah. Okay, okay, maybe, I think maybe because the candela does something that, like I said, I do, I did, now that you're asking, I did feel, I do feel more thirsty. So, a package came in the other day, and I was wondering, what in the world is this? Right, it comes from a marketing company, it comes from a marketing company, and... I wasn't sure what in the world it was because I couldn't, I didn't remember, I, I didn't think I had ordered anything, especially with any of the companies, so. And then I remembered that it was actually, I believe, I, mean, I could be wrong, I know I made this banner for the, the screen, but I could be completely wrong. I've signed up for a class, a seminar, workshop, I guess more of a workshop, about butter. Rusty, I don't know if you got this as well. It was part of the Star Chefs thing. And they're supposed to send you a butter kit for the webinar. It's a webinar. They certainly taped it well. Oh, yes, there we go. It's like a big cigar thing. The Butters of Europe. Make it magnifique. Enjoy. Let's hope, let's see what's inside. See Butters of Europe? And let's have a look. Hmm. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Alright, so very festive. 
like the French, very festive. Oh, it's got some napkins. Butters of your napkins, nice. Let's, then there's some kind of contraption in here. Huh? Oh, there's a butter. Oh, look at that. There's a. Oh, there's no. Oh. So it's a Butters of Europe butter thing. Oh, that's pretty cool. There's even like some temporary tattoos. Secrets de beurre, secrets de beurre. Huh? Not bad, not bad, nice. Oh, you know, I've, all this time when they said there's, there's a butter, I thought they were going to send butter for us to try. I guess we're going to talk about the butters. And then there's a book, Butter of Europe. Peanut, French butter, the secret that makes the difference. Oh, there's even one, oh, it's, there's one, in, the other side is in Spanish. Mantequilla de Europa. Mantequilla francesa, el secreto de, el secreto que hace toda la diferencia. Uh, it's the secret that makes a difference. <laughs> nice. Que rico mantequilla. Okay, let's open it the other way. Yum butter. Uh, the different types of butter, raw, spreadable. PDO butter, protected designation of origin, clarified, cooking with, oh, and then pure butter chips, oh, interesting. Then the love bunch of recipes, frequently asked questions, tips and tricks. All right, excellent, so that's cool. Que magnifique. Yeah, ceramic butter dish. Nice. I don't know if I, I don't I don't know if I use ceramic butter dishes, but I guess I could try using that one. I even have one of those like butter bells, but I never use that either. I really should because you know it's nice to have the butter room temperature. But here at the roasteries, when I'm not here, it's like the heat's mostly off. You know, we, we keep the heat. Set to right around 50 degrees, so that's still, 50 degree butter is still pretty hard, so it's not really doing anything if I leave it here. And then at home, nobody really understands how to use a, a, the butter bell. So how's our cigar doing? Cigar's doing all right. The HL Candela. One thing with the candela, you can kind of see, like, you know, your moisture on the, uh, on the end. Right. Still good flavor. It's still the same. It's grassy, nutmeg, pepper, spice. All right, so finally, the last thing in the mailbag. Is this thing from a company called OWC, which is Other World Computing. I don't know if you guys do any kind of computer stuff, but, and I don't know if they do a lot of things for like PCs, because I'm not a PC person, so I don't really know. I'm a Mac guy, so I've been buying from these guys for a long time. This particular order took a long time. Like I ordered this on December 20th. And not long in shipping. The shipping was like just a few days. But to get it to the point to ship, that took a long time. Like they didn't ship it until like just about, until fr probably Friday. And it got here, what, yesterday? So I ordered a new battery for the laptop. Ah, all right, excellent. And then ooh, I have to be 
careful where I throw this because if I throw it in that direction, it might ignite. And then this is a cradle for the the new Mac Mini. This is supposedly this is what took a long time to get in. So this cradle, it's oh, it's a cradle. It's a cradle. That's right. And it's relatively inexpensive. You, you put it underneath your computer. I mean, you put it underneath your, your desk. You screw it in, and then the, the Mac Mini sits here. Oh, that's kind of nice. All right, good. Temporary tattoos of butter. <laughs> wasn't expect yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Kind of cool, though. You kind of want to like make it into a real tattoo, especially with the cross... Butter knives, that's kind of funny. And then Buddy says, up your razor knife game. You know what, this is the this is the Home Depot special razor knife. Um, is this one of the ones? All right, so here, if you look closely, look at that. Bud, Bud you'll notice this. Notice the gold. Huh? The gold edge, that should tell you all about it. So, for those who are wondering like, what that means, like, so this is the cheap Anvil razor knife from Home Depot. I got this maybe two, three years ago at Home Depot. They come in packs of like three or four, really cheap. But this gold tip is the Lennox blade. So, while it is a, a very nondescript and very plain looking razor knife, it's got the quality blade. Of course, the blade's kind of getting old and kind of dull. All right, so but Tony's asking, can you please explain what a better butter bell is? Okay, one moment. I will do show and tell for this. So, Butter Bell. This is a Butter Bell. This particular one is a Le Creuset Butter Bell. And unlike Le Creuset's, you know, cookware, it's actually ceramic. And so the Butter Bell, it's called a bell. But what it is basically, it's this kind of like cup with the, the cup, a lidded cup almost. What you do is you take the softened butter you pack it into here, into this cup area, but you're gonna pack it only to about there or so, right? Then inside the main chamber, you fill it with water. Oh, there's a fill line, you can see a fill. I don't know if you can see that here, but there it is right there. There's a fill line, that little blue marker. You fill the water to there, and then when you set the butter bell into it, it creates a water seal like that, right? So that the butter is then protected from air. And it's a great way to keep butter on the, the countertop. But a lot of people really have a hard time. You know, a lot of people are a little bit freaked out because everybody thinks that everything should be refrigerated nowadays, and butter doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be refrigerated. In many ways, I think it's much nicer without it being refrigerated, especially when you want to spread it over bread or something like that. For not for butter bell. Hmm? Rusty, do you use that kind of thing as well, or like I, I should use it more? I always, I always like the idea of using it, but as you can see, I don't. All right, that's all of it that's in the mailbag today. I'm still waiting for the, the cigars from Saints and Sinners. 
Still hasn't arrived. I gotta send a message to uh, to Sean about that. samples. Turn that off. All right. And Rusty says that he does not. All right, that's all right. I don't, obviously I don't either, so. <laughs> So it's getting kind of kind of thin this week, I think, because like, you know, normally after we do the show on, on Thursday nights, I, on Friday nights, usually I'll watch whatever shows that I, I've been keeping up with. And lately I've been, you know, watching a lot of, well, I'm watching Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, but that ended last week, so that's, that's over for this year, and... Um, I thought it was a good ending. I enjoyed it. Some of the reviewers that I read later were, didn't like it, but I thought it was really quite enjoyable. Um, looking forward to the next season. And I think all that's right that's up this week is really the expense. And you know, the other shows that I watch are not have not that are more um, broadcast network. You know, things like Magnum PI or SEAL Team or SWAT. They're they don't come back for at least another week. The blacklist doesn't come back till the 21st. But I did watch this movie yesterday called Skylines, which evidently is a, a trilogy that was, I guess it's a low budget trilogy that started in, like the first one was a super low budget that made a ton of money compared to its budget. And then they made a second one that did very well. And then the third one came out in 2020. Of course, no movies have done well. Um, it was kind of interesting. It's something about... I still don't really understand the premise because I'm not really up to speed with the whole universe there, but basically it's aliens have come to the planet and I don't know if they have invaded the planet and are occupying it. To a certain extent they are, but the main heroine is somehow born to the aliens and so she's kind of part alien, but has a full alien brother and uh, they basically have to fight and they travel to some distant planet where the, I guess the leader of the aliens is, and they have to defeat it. It was, I don't really understand the, the premise, but I thought it was an enjoyable movie. Brian says The Expanse was great. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I think it's really interesting because the expanse. The one character is uh, from Baltimore, so he's he went to Baltimore earlier in the season, and then he evidently, last week's show he was going, he was heading back to Baltimore. So, you know, to see Baltimore in kind of a future is kind of interesting. But I think they're really doing a great job on this series this season. Mandalorian's over. Oh, and then I don't know if you guys saw that. Did we talk about? I don't know if we talked about this last week. Because I don't remember if I finished it by last week. But of course, the Karate Kid Cobra Kai came out, and oh, I guess it was done, right? Because it's not two weeks. Yeah, so it dropped on the first. So we must have talked about it last week. I thought Cobra Kai was really good. I basically binge watched that in like two or three days. So what else is happening? James Harden was traded to the New York, the, New, the Brooklyn Nets, which I just happened to see a blurb. But I have no idea who James Harden is. I 
Actually, I think, isn't James Harden... Harden is the name of the guy in The Expanse, right? And then evidently there's a new ACDC song that came out. I think that came out today. I watched it earlier. I watched their video for it. It's pretty good. Very classic sounding ACDC. So the cigar is doing well. I mean, it's 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 delivering. It's got a little more punchiness to it now. Um, it's still burning really well. Even consistent draw. Still a good amount of smoke. Nice quality of smoke. what I wanted to talk about too is that like I said I went to Tobacco Leaf yesterday and swung in to get the next round of cigars so next week we're doing the four kicks what's that called the four kicks crown the crown heads four kicks right but, coming up, and I haven't decided the order yet, but um, I am leaning towards a certain direction. Let's see, what do we have here? So we got the Box Press PCA Exclusivo for, um, from Illusione. They're part of their Cigar Preve line. And then I took some of your advice, so we got the Tabernacle. That's coming up. This is the Tabernacle... Oh, I don't know what it is. They're Lancero. Then the, I found this Liga Privada Tubo number 9. Toro, Oscuro. I think that might be interesting. That was a suggestion from you guys. And then uh, this one, the Placencia Almaforte in this hexagon shape. Look at that. It's a... Uh, Hexagon pressed. This one was pretty expensive. This was like $22.95. Pretty crazy. I was like, oh my gosh. But I just thought the, the, the shape was so interesting that I had to, to give it a try. And it's a little bit on the larger side than the size that I normally like to smoke. That's pretty thick. Right? Especially, let's say, compared to the... If we compare that to today's smoke... That's a pretty big difference. Mm -hmm. Like you can... Come on, I can't really say. I'm leaning more towards doing the Placentia first. So probably the... We'll probably do the Four Kicks and then the Placentia. And then maybe the Tabernacle. Then the Liga. And then back to Illusione. Put it right away. And George says, "Nice selection. That Placencia is really good. I'm looking forward to trying it. You've had that one already, I imagine." Any thoughts on it so far? I mentioned earlier in the show tonight that I met that guy, Michael, from uh, the broker for uh, Aganors. And like I talked about the, uh, the the tobaccos that they would roll for tasting. So these are, he gave me a couple samples. The C99 and the C98. Let me hold these up here for the camera. So these are Viso, Jalapa, and Viso from different Visos, one from Jalapa, one from Esteli. Jalapa's a little bit more to the north than Esteli. And um, from what he was telling me, that this is pretty much 
the foundation of all the cigars that Agonorsa makes. So either they're using some form of blending between these two leaves or at least one of the leaves in some form of component for pretty much all of their cigars. That's what he said. That's, that's what I believe he told me. And George says, eat before you smoke it. It's a powerhouse. Okay, I'll remember that. Remember that. Thank you for the tip. So Michael was saying that in order to taste and see what you want to do is you want to taste the 99 first, which is the Jalapa. And then smoke the Viso from Esteli. And these are just the, I guess these are the wrappers, maybe? But evidently these are the foundations of um, Agonorsa. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to talk to him more over the next few weeks and see if we can maybe do something where we can get a bunch of these so that all of you guys can get some of these as well and we could do like a, a joint smoke. I think that would be kind of nice. I'll see what, if, if, they can, if we can find a way to do that. Maybe it will be in conjunction with Tobacco Leaf or however they need to do it, you know, on their end. I think that will be fun. It will be fun. there so it's coming down it's you know still smoking well we haven't reached the uh, the band it's a long cigar well it kind of feels long Brian says, children must have rolled those. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing that I remember the most about visiting the Agonorsa factory was, so we were there, me and my, some of my friends were there, and then, of course, Paul Palmer happened to be there. Well, he was our host. And Don Giolito, Dion Giolito was there as well because he was, you know, doing his usual business. And in their, in their taste, they have a taste room at the factory, and you sit there, and they had a bunch of these. And they had more, like like Paul had a bunch more that were that we just kind of sat there and you smoked and just kind of got the flavor, just for the, just to enjoy the flavor of the tobacco. And that was really an interesting experience. And actually, their 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 tasting room was really interesting. They had this big like conference table, so it's a, a sizable room. And they had like these two fans, exhaust fans, like small, like maybe maybe they're about that big, right? In the one corner, and that was all they had. And man, it pulled all the smoke out. Like there was no, it was not not thick at all. It was really interesting how they did it. And I never, I don't really understand like all the the fluid mechanics behind it. But I, I thought they it did a really great job of. Clearing out the smoke, so it was, it, the whole experience of tasting was very enjoyable. And it was there where I finally got the, where I first got to try the this MTX cutter from Zycar, and you know this is what they were using in their in their factory in the tasting room. And the one that they were using at the time was probably as old as this is now, and it's it cut really well. It was a really great tool, and that's when I decided that I would buy this. And it's been a great tool. It's been a really excellent tool to use. I haven't really had a desire to buy another cutter since I bought that. So Russ is asking, do they fold up? Yeah, actually they do. So as you can see, there's a, they have a couple tools. I'll, put, I'll show you the tools. There's a, a can opener, a bottle opener, real tiny bottle opener. Like I've used it a couple times. It works pretty well. I, then there's this tool with this little notchy thing in it. I don't know what that's for. Oh, I think maybe that's to, oh, that's to adjust. Ah, it just occurred to me. That's to adjust like your lighter, right? 
And then on the other side here, there is a, a flat thing that I guess you can use as a, kind of like a screwdriver. Yeah, I guess you can use that for a screwdriver thing on your, on your lighters. Somehow. And then there's also a poker. Like this, this has a poker here. Next to that, there's a poker to poke. I guess you can also use it maybe for pipe smoking to stir. And then those fold together. And then from there, they all fold in. And then from there, basically, it breaks here and here. This way, as you can see, there's a little key ring, and then it folds up like that. So, if you want to put on your key ring, it just kind of hangs in like that. It's really a great, I think this is a really great, fantastic tool. I think that um, this one has there definitely has been some wear on it, so it's definitely not as sharp as it was. It's still pretty sharp. It's to the point though where I, I keep thinking maybe I should call up Zycar and say, Hey. I understand they have a lifetime warranty and they'll either replace it or sharpen it. So I've kind of thought about calling them and doing that. Tony says, po it's a poker's to bleed your lighter. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. So yeah, it's really compact. Since I don't really travel with it anywhere, I just kind of leave it open most of the time. It did, I, I thought earlier today we talked a little bit about there's some rust somewhere. But I believe it's stainless steel. It's a brush stainless. So it's a handsome thing. There's also... Oh, there it is. There's, it looks like there's a little bit of wear right here. Yeah, right, and there's a little bit of rust. Probably where, as you can see, there's some... Just a dot of rust. A little bit of a... Uh, probably where it's kind of the nickel's wearing through or whatever. Or is that just dirt? Oh, maybe it's just dirt. Oh, it's just tobacco residue. Yeah, they've been pushing it away, so now you can see again. But yeah, great tool. If you if you want to get one, go get one. They're really nice. There, they, then of course there's a. You can if you want to get a branded one. I don't think I have it here, but like I I did get one not too long, well, a couple years back. from Roma. Well, I guess I don't have it here, but I think I have one somewhere. There's the different companies will come out with their own branded, but I thought the Roma had one that was really kind of handsome. Alright, I'm going to take the band off now. So guys, everybody came in clear, clean from the, I think we all came in clean from the COVID testing. Yeah, and for, for like last week when we were here, we were, I was, I had just taken my COVID test last Wednesday. So last Thursday show, I was still waiting. So I was kind of like in quarantine, hiding out, mostly here at the roastery. And, um. You know, we, one of our friends came down with COVID, so we had to get, all of us had to kind of sequester and get tested. And now we're all clean, I think. I think we're all clean, is that right? My test came back Friday night, so that was kind of, kind of a relief, my gosh. I was a little bit worried there for a few days. I was like, ah. Oh. You know, in my kind of work, the, the concern for me is really that loss of, uh, of taste. 
you know, since pretty much everything that we're doing requires tasting, you know, tasting the coffees and tasting everything, everything we're making in the kitchens, in the bakery, so it's always a concern to lose that sense of taste. You know, it kind of reminded me of, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that chef in Chicago by the name of Grant Ackett's, and Grant owns a restaurant called um, Alinea, and he came down with tongue cancer uh, quite a few years ago. And so he was kind of worried because they might have to cut out his tongue. He lost his sense of taste for a, a, few, a while. I, th I believe he regained everything, but you know he, he was able to beat it. But man, that's that's kind of really devastating, especially if you're a chef of, of his caliber at, at his level. It's like if you can't taste anything, man. So Brian says we all test test name, which is great. Have you guys heard from uh, our, our man who, who, who is, he's, is he still uh, under the weather? The draw's getting a little bit slower. I think it was starting to go out, so I had to pull on a little bit more to get the get the smoke back up, which is quite a lot at the moment. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear, glad to hear, glad to hear you're doing all right. Oh, I see that. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't turn out to be uh, any... Hopefully that doesn't turn out badly. So right now, it's starting to get warmer, starting to get some of that heat coming through the cigar. Maybe a little bit of bitterness starting to come through. Which I guess we, we just got to really, it's just that similar to most cigars where you start to get that kind of bitterness at the end. Maybe a little more tar buildup. But yeah, Brian, you, you were asking before about the palate thing. Yeah, the, Definitely, it's very dry. This cigar on my palate is much drier than other cigars. I definitely have more of a, a desire to drink. You know, that, that thirstiness is, is definitely more pronounced with this cigar than any others. What else is happening in the world today? Let's have a look here. Anything interesting happening? Oh yeah, they did. I just saw that they impeached the president last night. Hmm. Jacksonville Jaguars have hired Urban Meyer as the head coach. I don't know what that means. Is that good for them? Uh, maybe. Ravens are playing the uh, the Buffalo Bills. I actually had an interesting conversation with some people. You know, that one of my friends, she's a, a Buffalo Bills fan, and someone's asking, you know, one of the, this other person we know is asking, hey, what should I make for the Buffalo Bills, the Bills Ravens game? You know, she's a, this other girl is a is a Bills fan. Her husband's a Ravens fan, and. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, the Bills, I don't really have an opinion on the Bills. Like, you know, if we're, if we're playing the Steelers, we want to crush the Steelers, right? There's no mercy to crush. We must crush them at all costs. Bills, uh, you know, if, they, if we win, if we win, awesome. That's what we want. We want to win. But 
if you lose, ah, not a big deal. And sadness, but. But it was interesting to see, I don't know if you guys saw it last weekend, but the Steelers just completely collapsing. You always like to see that. You always enjoy that. But watching the game, though, you know, they were, they were pretty far behind. They were behind the whole time. Last two minutes, they're like, what, maybe a touchdown and a half behind, 10 points behind? And uh, one of my friends, she was like, I mean, Steelers going to lose. I said, don't, never say that. Never say that. One thing I've learned as a Ravens fan playing the Steelers is that, yes, two minutes you're ahead by maybe a, 10 points. If any team in the NFL is going to come back and beat you, it's going to be the Steelers in that amount of time. Like I remember we were at years ago, was it 10 years, 10, 11 years ago, we, when we were still hanging out at that uh, hookah bar that had the cigars, we went to watch the playoff game between the Steelers and the Ravens, and the Steelers made that like last second field goal. Man, that was just, that was a bitter, bitter loss. Bitter. I still remember that. Bitter, bitter loss. But I'm hoping that we'll do well because, like, you know, one thing I was, some people were, were talking about that, and, you know, I said, you know, one thing we talk to, to Steelers fans, right? They, they love to talk about how they have, um, how they have what? How, they, how the Steelers have six Super Bowl rings. Man, Steelers fans love to throw that in your face. They love to be like six, 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 six. Nobody has more. Shut up already. Just be quiet. You know, because when you look at the numbers, on average, it takes the Steelers 12 years to get a Super Bowl ring. Compared to the Ravens, eight years to get the Super Bowl ring. Now, if we look at our history, every eight years wins the Super Bowl, or at least go to the Super Bowl, we really were kind of due last year. That was eight years since our last appearance. Of course, we didn't make it. And, but last year was really different because, you know, we were such a, the team was so hot, they were winning so much, that they got the first week by. They were the, the seeded team. And we've never gone to the Super Bowl as a seeded team. We all, for every Super Bowl we've done, the two that we've done, we had to fight every step of the way, right? Every step of the way, we had to be the, we had to be the hungry ones that were fighting and fighting and fighting, right? And I remember I, I had season tickets back at the last one. So in 2013, the first game, which was against the, um, the Indianapolis Colts, were at Ravens Stadium at m, at m Bay. And, you know, when you go to, you know, a whole season of, of games, you know, you get to know the people sitting around you. And, you know, in that year, like I remember in December of that year, 20, December 2012, the team was kind of wavering, right? People were like, oh, man, people were down on the team. People were down on Flacco. Like, I remember I went to Modell Sporting Goods to get some, like, gear, right? Some Ravens gear. And I'm looking around, and there was this, this two women, you know, mother age, you know. And I remember they were just trashing on Flacco. They are like, oh, we, we don't like Flacco. He sucks. He's not going to make it. He sucks. Blah, blah, blah. We're never going to, we're never, I remember they're saying, we'll never buy Flacco stuff because he sucks. And I just was thinking, man, you guys are, like, too worried about it. And so... On, after the first game, after we beat the Indianapolis Colts, this was the last game that Ray Lewis was going to have in M&T Bank. I was talking to the people around me. I said, hey, guys. They're, they were all kind of worried. Every, Ravens fans are always worried. Like, always like, oh, man, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. Like, but I said to them, look, I tell you right now, we got four more games. Four more games. We're going to play four more games. They're like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I said, we're going to play four more games. That's it. It's, it's done. We're going to play four more games. Now, I really had more of a pulse of what's happening. I had a real feeling for it back then because I went to all the games. This year, I haven't really paid attention to the games because everything else is happening in the world. But if we're going to make it, I think this could be it. I mean, we have, we're in the position now where we have historically gone to the Super Bowl, with, meaning that we would have to fight our way. So if we can just win each game, then we might do well. Hopefully, 
we will be positively surprised in three weeks. And so Brian says, just waiting for the Senate to convict. They won't sense. They won't meet again until the night. Yeah, you know, that's the interesting thing. Like, I was listening to them, and Mitch McConnell's like, well, we're not going to, I'm not going to call an emergency meeting. All right. So everyone's saying that, the, the news are saying that they're not going to meet again until the 19th. So they probably won't take a vote until after Biden has been sworn in. It's kind of like, well, what? At that point, what's the point? Like, what, if they were to, like, remove him, from, so it's a Senate trial, ends up convicting the president. What does that mean? Does that just mean that he doesn't get the perks of, like, the million dollars a year in, in, in security and all, all that other stuff? And he doesn't get his, his, uh, his $200,000 a year payment? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting time. And then Brian all says, Dan rather came out of retirement to death. <laughs> well, Dan has seen it all. Oh, speaking of which, just remind me for some reason. Did you guys happen to watch uh, Jeopardy yesterday? That guy, Kent, was it Ken Jennings is the guy that's kind of temporarily replacing Alex Trebek? Evidently, that was the first episode since Trebek's passing. It was pretty good. You know, he did a little bit of a, of a tribute to Alex Trebek. That was nice. And George says, Flacco beat Tom Brady twice. Yes. That, that one game that we were... Uh, I don't know. Was that the year we... I don't think it was the year we won. I think it was the year before. The year that we went to... Uh, to the Patriots Stadium and just beat them. Man, that was... I, I almost went to that game. Like, we were talking about going and we could have gotten tickets, but we just didn't go. And I was like, man, we should have gone to that game. That would have been great. Yeah, I think for Baltimore people, it's really Steelers and Patriots that you would just want to see lose at all times. Now, I think Tom went off to another team, right? And did he, is he not doing well? This Did he not do well this year? I'm okay with that. But Belichick did, uh, speaking of the Patriots, Belichick did turn down the president's invitation for the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I thought that was interesting. So this is kind of going on, so we're going to relight. Oh, damn it. I mean, it's good. It's, there's a little bit of crack. I don't can see that there, but there's a little bit of crack in the wrapper here. But let's let's try to relate it again. It's quite. In, it's still enjoyable. Like the bitterness. There was a little bit of bitterness, but it wasn't overwhelming. I don't know how you guys get, but when the cigar gets to be this low, I have a harder time with it because it's almost like I'm inhaling the smoke. I don't know if you guys have that experience. Like, I have to kind of time the, the breaths. So I guess the big question is, we always ask, would I buy it again? I think in a word, yes. Yes, for sure. I mean, it's not one of those where, I don't know if this is a cigar that I want to buy, like, by the box. But I think it's a very enjoyable cigar. And I do like Candela wrappers overall, so I probably would, well, I definitely would buy more. You know, one or two. Candelas tend to have a very unique flavor. That unique experience, that whole like um, grassy saltiness. So it's not one that I would want to smoke daily, or you know, regular on a heavy rotation. But every once in a while, it's a nice way to break it up. And like 
Do you guys have any favorite candelas? So back to the whole um, idea of the thirstiness. So yeah, definitely there's more, I get more, th I'm, I'm drinking, I want to, dr I have more parched feeling on the palate, so I want to drink more. Also, one of the interesting things is that I think that's, that's a big part of it because, um, so for each of the live streams that I've been doing, I've been preparing these, you know, these paper towels, right? And I've, you typically use three. So far, I've only used two. So I think my palate is drier because of it. That's good, that's good. This is quite enjoyable. So what do you guys got going on this weekend? Anything interesting? I have no idea what's happening this weekend. I mean, there's nothing happening, I guess. Someone's asked me today if uh, Mayor Scott was going to reverse the... Uh, uh, the outdoor seating ban, I have no idea. Evidently there's rumors that he might be doing it soon, but I don't know, I think we're reaching, I think we're still pretty high on the, uh, the COVID, especially on the, um, the bed count. So personally speaking, I, I don't think it'll come until February. The number of people that I've known or have been getting the vaccines, so it seems that it's starting to get more. The distribution seems to be better now. Evidently, they opened the largest va uh, vaccine center in America at the uh, Cardinal Stadium in uh, Arizona. George is saying that educators can start getting vaccines. I'm excellent, excellent. Have you guys, have you scheduled yourself yet, George? I've heard from um, some people that the, uh, I guess the, one of the, I don't know if this is for everyone, but at least the ones that I've talked to there, they've gone to get vaccinations at the Maryland, at the state fairgrounds here in Timonium. And some of them told me they did have some mild, like flu, symptoms, but nothing really heavily. So Rusty says, but here in New Jersey, the state just announced that smokers can... Really? Smokers? That's 
can trust it. I wonder why that is. Okay, the county in which your teach handles it, wait to hear how it's going to be done. Are you a Baltimore County teacher, George? Is that it? So far, all the people that I know that have gotten the vaccine have just been in the medical field. And then they have to get their employers to vouch for them that they are in the medical field before they can go to the state to, to get their appointment done. I don't think the rest of us that aren't in the, the front lines will be getting it anytime soon. Probably not for, I'm guessing not till maybe the second, later in the second quarter of the year. So, summertime. By the way, George, what is the, what is the, the avatar you have on your on your account here with the Maryland cross on it. I'm guessing alma mater. We're getting down to the to the end. It's starting to warm my fingers. Ah, oh, that's the issue of my high school. What high school is that? I'm not familiar with that, uh, that shield. Oh, Mount St. Joe. Oh, okay, okay. George, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to guess we're, we're around similar age. I, I One of my close friends from elementary school went to St. Joe, a guy named Victor Doda. I don't know if you might happen to have known him. Like myself and Tony, he would have graduated in 1987, from St. Joe. Yeah, this is actually smoking really well, even now. Like. The flavor is really enjoyable, still consistent, still has that nice grassy saltiness to it. Well, Kasha 97, all right, a little bit later, a little bit later. You know, I don't know, we, Tony and I went to Loyola, and they just sent us a notice this week. They're, they got some money from some of the alumni some big donors, and they're, they're going to redo these uh, the, the soccer field, and they're going to make it this really beautiful, like, you know, it's really interesting, like, you go back, like, if I go back to our high school, like, it's, like, people were always like, wow, man, that's pretty amazing, and it's pretty awesome, like, the facilities now at Loyola are pretty awesome, and I just kind of look and think, man, I, like, it wasn't this nice when we were there, it was kind of, you know, Plain and simple. Like the soccer field stayed in the there. Then I got a stadium, but it's kind of got these like nice bleachers, which kind of. So I said to my some of my friends in my class that on Facebook made the comment, "Oh, it kind of looks." Oh, we're kind of finally get to be like Calvert Hall, which is never, that's never a welcome comment. All right, my fingers are burning now. As 
tight form of puff. Last puff, last puff. All right, that's enough, that's enough. All right, that was the Illusione HL Candela, the um, Holy Lance Candela. Nice, nice cigar, really enjoyable. I would smoke that again. Get up for the collection, I would recommend it. Um, that's, I guess that's it, then we're, another Thursday has gone by, and, uh, it's a beautiful day, weather's kind of nice, I'm not sure, oh, I, th I heard it's going to rain over the weekend, so, it's not going to be as nice this weekend, but, um, hope you guys enjoy it, thanks for tuning in, really appreciate you coming down again on a Thursday and, and joining me here, we're going to return next Thursday, we're going to be doing the, the Crown Heads 4 Kicks, the purple label, I don't know if there's other labels under the 4 Kicks brand, but it's the purple one, so if you can get one, get one, and uh, let's try to join in and smoke it all together. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, well, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back again next Thursday at 8 p.m. Have a great week.